to see if there's any interest of people that want to provide content and to be paid with crypto. And it's, look, it's been remarkable and quite staggering. I met a lady at 55 years of age at the Dutton Hotel for lunch. I've known Carol for a number of years. She said, Steve, I've heard about what you're doing. I want to put some money into it, but I want to talk about it first. So I went through the motions, went lunch at the Duxton. She turned around and said, I'm in. Plus, Steve, I've got to tell you a little secret. She said, um, I've been in a dating scene for a while, and the younger generation like me, so I'd also like to be a content provider. So we signed Carol up, and she's, um, she's a registered nurse, and she's really looking forward to be able to provide some content. And then we go to the extreme, where I've had phone calls from younger generation people, and, and it's been an education to me, and one girl's name was Pixie. I said, Pixie, who would in their right mind name their daughter Pixie? She said, your real name Pixie? She said, no. But I dress up as a Pixie. I said, right. She said, I want to be in your top 20 when you start GFE. And I sort of worked out quickly why she wanted to be in the top 20. It's because she's going to get pretty big exposure. So she said, look, I, I'm into cosplay. So it's uniforms, this, that and the other. I said, OK, she said, I, see, I don't know much about it. We've got the dinosaur, but um, she said, I'll send you some photos. I said, please make sure they do some photos. And sure enough, they were. Pixie's got a following of 1,675 followers and 675 paying people that pay for her content. And sure enough, she dressed up as a Pixie at Pixie years and a hat and all the rest of it. So that's been quite an education for, for myself and James. Um, we've uh, slowly been working with all these content providers. It's been quite a city. We haven't pushed it because we don't want to create too much work in the back end because we know once we're set up, we have no doubt that we're going to get a lot of people coming on board, whether it be musos, artists, um, obviously content providers, gamers, whatever, boxers. Uh, there's people coming on board with it. People that, you know, cooking, you name it we feel that they'll be coming on board in, in droves. A few years ago, I worked in Bali for 12 months for an Australian building company. I looked at a place called Changu. I set up an office on Pintai Balao, which was just, anyone knows Bali, which is just down from the old Changu club. During that period of time, we, we had a building company. We set up real estate, property management, all the rest. And I got to know all the expats, all the Kiwis, Aussies, all the Poms, we all stood together. And I met this guy called Tom, Dougal, who's from Melbourne, and that's going back to 2012. I rang up Tommy the other day, about two weeks ago, I said, Tommy, you've got to listen to this GSE thing. I think you'll like it. Tommy's actually, I call him the gold fingers. Everything he's touched in Bartley uh, has turned to gold. The guy's become a multi, multi millionaire through living in Bartley, just by buying properties at the right time, the right price, and then on leases into the major overseas companies. Little did I know, Tommy's now an influencer and a well-respected influencer in Bali. He's 52 years of age and his nickname is, in Bali, in Indonesia actually, Muscle Daddy. And you want to see this guy, he's literally cut and he's quite often on TV in Bali, Indonesia, doing nutritional food educational programs, teaching people to train, um, and it's quite remarkable to see. Tommy's not short of a few words, and uh, he lets the old F-bomb slip now and again. And he's with these, uh, just the latest one was, he was talking to these Balinese people on camera, and he let a few slip, and they were quite happy for Tommy to get away with it. So talking to Tommy, he said, Steve, I know all the influencers in Bali, everyone. So he said, I've put a word out through Instagram, and all the rest of that, and they're all on board. So I spoke to James about it, and that's one of the areas we're going to target also. We are going global, but we feel Bali with the amount of people that go to Bali and back and forth, and the amount of influencers living up there, it's about, I think Tommy was saying about nearly close to 4,000 people now. They work full time as influencers in Bali, making some, you know, some serious dollars. So, yeah, so as far as getting back to the growth goes, James and I have sort of kicked off. Um, he's going to make a very exciting announcement very, very soon. We've got uh, Sam that's on board. Um, Sam's based and is a businessman based in between bounces between Singapore and Malaysia. A lot of contacts. Uh, so he, Sam is our now our chief technical officer. 
and uh, I'm going to let uh, James do a little bit more introduction and, and give you some news. Um, one of the reasons we got me here today is um, we are peacefully tokens, and there also is an opportunity for someone if they want to um, look at the well, James. We'll go into more detail later. If you wanted to buy, um, I forget the name you used. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, we'll go into it later. But uh, if you're interested in pre buying some tokens, uh, we can talk about that later. Um, otherwise, Spain, I'm going to introduce you to James now. I thank you very much for coming out on Friday. Uh, very good of you and very nice. And, Help yourselves with the food if you, if you get hungry, and I'm pretty sure Johnny Toy with the torts are females this level and men downstairs. But thank you very much for your time, people, and thanks for coming through. Okay, guys, thanks for, thanks for coming. Uh, still apart from coming back up the stairs. But, uh, so it's my job to uh, introduce you to the actual project uh, and how it works. Uh, so, like we said, it's, uh, we've named it GFE, uh, the, the main components. Gaming, dating, and social. Just a quick introduction. Uh, so obviously, this, this is a quite a wordy uh, presentation. We're not expecting to read through it, uh, but it's all around the monetization of time. Uh, if you look, look back to earlier projects like Antarctica, uh, even looking at things like Uber, uh, the monetization of time, uh, moving through to like OnlyFans model, um, is just getting bigger and bigger uh, as we go. So. Introducing GFE, so the platform itself um, a little bit different to the traditional cryptocurrency uh, projects. So one of the things we saw from a crypto space was when the market's going extremely well uh, as a project, you're, you're funded, uh, you have fundings, and you're able to move forward with marketing and development uh, at a much quicker rate. Uh, when the market's bad, as it is uh, currently, uh, a lot of projects obviously lose funding. But, um, the funding that they have is worth 78% you know, less than what it was uh, 9 to 12 months ago. Um, so what we've done is we actually created a, a platform and a company. So the company has its own revenue model regardless of the token. Um, so what we did is we you know, obviously wanted to come up with a product that works regardless uh, and blockchain just makes it better. So the main core components of the GFE platform is the, the content engine, uh, which is a, a content creation uh, platform um, where you have uh, free subscriptions and behind a paywall using micropayments. Uh, a dating matchmaker and within the same platform, a gaming matchmaker, which was a, a later use case that was presented to us uh, later on down this, and uh, the sports store. So the sports store is, is about building an ecosystem um, within the platform. So if you look at uh, other traditional platforms, uh, they have a, a content engine, or they may have a dating or a matchmaking engine, but they don't have uh, the luxury, like we've got a luxury goods store. So even if you, you weren't um, on the app for any of that, for the dating, the gaming, or the content, uh, we still have uh, what we're building is that the content, um, a luxury goods store uh, where you can use crypto currency as well. So introducing uh, the GFE Gaming, which is, uh, we put our own little spin on the play to earn with the gaming matchmaker. Uh, so there's no platform in the world currently that allows for uh, gamers to use their gamer tags uh, and match up with people uh, around the world uh, for a facilitated fee, uh, whether that be professional gamers, uh, Twitch streamers, or even just e-girls uh, as well, which is a fairly popular market. Um, we effectively, it's a, we're building our alternate revenue, our alternate income system for people to be able to play games um, for, for an income uh, through GFE tokens. So that's a quick rundown of GFE gaming. So GFE dating is a, it's a dating platform. Uh, whilst you know the pictures and the colours represent a traditional dating system, it is a, a paid dating through using the GFE token. Uh, and part of that that dating uh, system, we sort of ran through earlier today is you can facilitate, facilitate the sale and transaction of like multiple uh, different dates uh, as such. So, um, you know, Lucas, for example, can charge $200, $250 for a spa session uh, to, to, you know, for someone to take on Lucas in the ring for, you know, 20 minutes uh, at the gym. Um, people like Jordan uh, Belfort, uh, Wolf of Wall Street, 
I think he charges uh, about twenty thousand dollars for a, like a weekend um, of, of training and probably partying as well. Um, so we can facilitate that through the, the dating platform. So there's multiple, multiple use cases, um, not just the traditional dating. Uh, that moves us to social, and it's blue and white for a reason. Uh, so that's mostly your adult content, um, but also including uh, things like crypto traders. So anyone who develops and, and creates a, a following that people will pay uh, for that content style, using micropayments instead of a subscription model, uh, which we sort of ran through the numbers. And if you use a subscription model, which most people are currently doing, uh, the drop-off seems to happen like relatively quickly, uh, but by using a micropayment system, uh, which is where blockchain comes in, uh, you can have multiple um, followers and follow multiple people as well. So GFE is spoiled. Uh, so just to read the headlines, so obviously the, the luxury goods market uh, is a $1.5 trillion industry uh, and the majority of 50% uh, are millennials and, and we all know uh, when the market's good, you know, everyone's uh, wet Lambo and all the rest. Um, so we're basically creating a, a store within the platform uh, that will facilitate uh, not just only GFE tokens but uh, also Bitcoin. Ethereum and a couple other major cryptos uh, as well. So one of the other parts that uh, came to us a little bit later on is the, the spoiled store. So if you look at a traditional platform, um, a lot of people start out from a, an amateur perspective, um, you know, taking selfies and, and selling them on a subscription-based model. Um, you know, it's very hard to get into the top 1% of, of earnings, uh, and they're the ones that are making the, the big money. So within the, the sports store is, is a, a services type uh, product where we'll have uh, like professional photographers, life coaches, influencer coaches, uh, and everything that you need to, to actually build your business and your platform as an influencer, uh, including marketing and all the rest as well. So if you were to join the platform, uh, earn a modest amount of money in the first few months, potentially you'd be able to use that, those tokens or those funding um, to actually build your, your empire as well. So one of the uh, more important ones for myself was that if you're going to launch a business and you're going to do business is to uh, be a responsible business. And uh, you know one of the things that really got me looking into the research uh, is the amount of instances of uh, human trafficking and child exploitation that happens within these apps and unfortunately it's, it's one of those things that you know you'll never stop completely but um, you know a lot of the platforms you know do the bare minimum from a legal perspective uh, whereas we've effectively set up the model that 10% uh, of our revenue will go to the not-for-profit the GFA uh, foundation which we hope to launch as a town uh, moving forward uh, probably in about two years and uh, that will allow voting rights for the Dow holders uh, as to where the, the funds are allocated from a, a charity perspective uh, as well. So um, we will have also have a donate now button uh, and influencers will obviously be able to, to donate a portion of their funds. Um, but the big thing is that a 10% revenue from our side uh, goes to the, the GFE Foundation. Um, there are a few crypto heads in the room, so uh, I have roughly sort of drawn it down to something that everyone can understand. Um, at the moment, we've decided to go with a, a Binance Smart Chain token, uh, BEP20, um, to be able to facilitate the micropayments within the system. The total supply is 170 billion, which sounds like a lot, but uh, when we calculate it, you know, the amount of users that we hope to get over the amount of years, it's actually sort of significant in terms of what we're going to need. Um, we will release an initial circulating supply of 120 billion, minus the, the vested tokens from the team um, and the founders. Uh, the, the new supply, the 50 billion from 120 to 170, um, you know, we have to really work on how that tokenomic model works because when you increase your supply, if you're not increasing the demand, well then what happens is the, the token typically goes down. Um, so what we've done from uh, the, the new supply perspective is to help grow the platform. Uh, we created the, the Trailblazer Fund, 
And the Trailblazer Fund is a affiliate referral type uh, system. So if you're one of the first influencers on the GFE platform and you help to bring other influencers into the GFE platform, uh, then 5% of that influencer income uh, will come back to you in the form of new tokens. Um, so we're only releasing new tokens at representative of 5% of maximum of the revenue that we're, we're actually increasing the platform. Uh, and that's through the, the Trailblazer Fund. Um, so as Steve mentioned, the opportunity um, for us to, to get going and get moving, we released uh, 10 billion tokens for a pre-ICO price uh, of 00025 AUD per token, uh, which works out to roughly 4 million tokens for $1,000. Uh, we are uh, 10 cents sold, so we're, we're now at 9 billion tokens. Uh, and then we, when we launched to the, the public sale, we've got a 60 billion uh, available. We haven't 100% worked out exactly how we're going to do that yet, whether that will be through uh, a reverse pool or um, through an IEO or an IDO. Uh, and obviously we're planning to launch first quarter of next year. And to do that, so we've met half the team. Uh, so obviously I'm James Lidiard. Stephen Tennant, uh, Sam Tan, who's uh, based in Singapore and occasionally comes back here, um, and making uh, an announcement. One of the biggest you know, uh, questions that we got from most people is how you're going to develop this. Um, glad to say that we've uh, recently just got Aaron Alderman uh, on board as a lead developer as well. So welcome, welcome Aaron. And uh, partnered obviously with, proudly with uh, Blockchain WA and the Marketing Dumbo Library. So here's our roadmap. Uh, based January, sort of when, when we got going, uh, it's basically around building the team, building the token tokenomics, um, building the platform, and securing funding. Uh, as Steve mentioned, so we have spoken to a couple of venture capital uh, companies and some private equity firms, but we do have an opportunity uh, from a private perspective as well by negotiation. Uh, when we launch in January through to December of next year, it's uh, effectively just launching the, the GFE platform as a minimum, minimum viable product. Uh, security and exchange listings, so obviously being a B, B20, we'll, we'll uh, move forward with PancakeSwap. Launching the full product, uh, the gaming dating social spoiled, we'll probably mostly launch with the, the social part to, uh, as a minimum product. Uh, and then launching globally and securing major sponsorships. The following year is all about uh, developing the metaverse layer. I've left that slide out because it's confusing to most people, including myself, but uh, it, it's developing that, that next section, the next part of, of the platform and the app. Um, and also potentially moving to a down model as well. All right, uh, so thank you very much. Thank you guys for coming on a Friday. Again. Johnny's coming up again apparently, he's had a few more drinks and wants to say a few things, but uh, <laughs> what I will do is I'll get Johnny, Aaron and Steve up, uh, we were originally going to uh, you know, throw it out to you guys to uh, do a little bit of Q&A and then we should be able to just basically wrap up, uh, have stay for a few drinks, uh, we have booked the rooms um, to 6.30. Uh, I don't think anyone's coming to afterwards. If anyone is interested in making uh, a purchase, grabbing a white paper, or just having a discussion, uh, the two meeting rooms at the rear uh, will be open after this presentation as well. So thank you very much. Any questions from the group? Come on, guys. And Joey's got something as well. Guys, before you start, think about your questions. Think about what you've experienced in the past. Think about what you're looking for. <clears throat> Remember, YouTube started as a dating site. YouTube was something and someone sent their videos in and this is me, look how cute I am, whatever. What are you looking for in a social experience? What are you looking for in a gaming experience? What are you looking for in a dating experience? Uh, what makes you feel better about what you're doing? Uh, who do you want to meet? So. Consider these questions. Ask questions like, what is the revenue model? Where are you going? When is this happening? How are we as an investor or someone else uh, going to make our money out of this? Or why should we get involved? Uh, think about your questions. And uh, see where this goes. All right.
Uh, obviously, we can have private discussions uh, after this as well to seek out someone from the team. It should be fairly easy to spot. But uh, anyone got any questions here? What's your public sale price for the token? So the public sale uh, at the moment, we haven't decided. We're going to go through uh, evaluation process uh, as we get closer. To, to the private sale. Obviously, a lot of it depends on how the market is as well. So we, we had hoped to be a little bit higher than the triple zero two five pay per Um uh, We were initially at a USD pricing, but uh, obviously, we've got to move with the markets as well. Uh, it doesn't make sense for us to overvalue our token when uh, you know Bitcoin's currently sort of floating around that twenty thousand US mark as well. So, so how much are you looking at raising? Yeah, so 2.5 million, so 10 billion at triple zero two five is 2.5 million Australian. Uh, that effectively gets uh, just over a minimum viable product. It gets its our influences and spends uh, the money on the marketing to go for a proper launch. Uh, that being said, we've all uh, we've got case A, case B, case C. Um, so obviously, if we don't raise the 2.5, well then you know we've got um, you know we've got a plan B for that as well. So it's all about um, just getting the product ready uh, and launching and then obviously we, we sort of scaled from there as well. Um, you know, we, we wanted to make sure when we went to a private like public site that we actually had a bit like a bit more than the traditional uh, cryptocurrency that just pops up on the new one. So uh, effectively like if you look at where we're at now, we could launch now, that's what a lot of uh, a lot of tokens do. Um, we decided we wanted to do it properly, uh, do a, a small private sale, build the product uh, and launch properly in January as well. Yes, Martin, you should have all the answers. <laughs> no, Martin's got to get in error on because a lot, a lot of the time the vision and the value proposition are so strong in these things, but the software is often, you know, such a, can be, can be a breaker. Um, and having someone that can really lead that and, and make sure that's developed. With the MVP, what are we roughly talking in terms of time to get the software to a place where it's operational. Yeah, so um, we've been in discussions. Uh, obviously, Aaron's still very new to the team, uh, so I won't choke you here. Uh, but we have gone through what needs to be built, uh, what we can buy, what we can use as a plugin. Um, and our intentions and our aim is to go for the, the social content to begin with. So you've at least got that social experience uh, to where people can create a profile, um, update their photos, all that sort of stuff and, and start earning uh, some revenue and some income and bring on those influences because ultimately it is an influencer driven program and, and uh, one of the beauties of, of, of this particular product um, is there's a lot less marketing costs because everybody's marketing to, to bring people into that platform as well so as it grows um, the marketing also grows with it yes sir Yeah, so that was actually like a, a really tough one for us and, and a, one, a big one for Johnny as well. Um, so within the platform, once we, we build it past the MVP model and release the, the data, um, even just due to regulatory compliances, we're going to have a, a simple swap type platform within the app, uh, which will require a KYC. Um, people are like happy to KYC for Binance, but not so much for like a dating app. It's a bit of a weird thing, but uh, because it's it's all in one, all inclusive, the, the KYC model uh, should effectively mean that you're dealing with the with the right person. That doesn't mean that you can't copy someone else's uh, profile, but um, it, it definitely makes it less um, less easy to do, I guess. Um, hopefully, that sort of answers your question. We can't sort of stop everybody unfortunately and once we move uh, a little bit more forward from a smart contract perspective we probably can do something with that which is why johnny's probably got his hand up um yeah so uh, hopefully that answers it we've still got a lot of technology to build but um you know the the, the blockchain component of it sort of helps us from not having uh, a whole lot of bots and a whole lot of fake profiles and like, swindlers and all the rest uh, 
Yeah, like actually um, having Aaron on board, it, it really comes down to him as well. So um, Bonnet's smart chain for myself has just sort of made sense from a, a pancake listing um, and just the, the gas fees and relatively easy to create. Um, but we're also looking at like other blockchain projects and uh, a few of them are off actually offering grants um, that we've applied for as well. But um, So we may end up sort of half on our smart chain uh, and then Ethereum ramp as well because um, the Ethereum gas fees seem to have come down a lot with NFTs sort of not really doing much at the moment. Um, and hopefully if they sort of get their shit together then an upgrade, um, you know, potentially would be an ERC20 token. But also, uh, Neo is looking pretty good as well because you can, you can use multiple uh, languages with Neo. So um, ultimately, it's going to come down to the to the tech guy. I think. But I think I should be making those decisions. Yes, Johnny. That's what I want to know. Uh, we heard that from you and we've heard from Steve, but we don't exactly know what Aaron does in this. Yeah, I'm gonna, um, we'll give Aaron uh, just a quick introduction to himself. Um, I just didn't really want to put him up here. Short, short notice. Uh, poor guys, you know, being stuck with the kids at home on school holidays. So, uh, yeah. Right, right. 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 You know, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Um, I, I actually want to own uh, I started up in uh, September last year, so I'm familiar with uh, how how he must be at the moment. But, uh, Can you speak closer to the mic? Sure. Um, so I've, I've got over 10 years' experience in. Um, a web two web, uh, web two technology. So, and, and in the last two years, I've worked in the web three space. I work for a, a company in Perth called uh, Carbon Chain. Uh, they actually built a, a social media platform on the blockchain. So I actually helped uh, build their their web two infrastructure, their actual uh, social media platform itself. Um, I actually pitched this kind of idea to them, but they weren't really interested in that at the time. So that when James came to me and told me about it, I was like, holy holy shit, how do I get involved in this? It's like really, you know, I've, I've got the experience, I've got the knowledge, I know how to execute this kind of thing. So you know, I'm really excited to be part of the team and, you know, with, with the experience I've, I've, I've developed with my own, um, you know, platform, my own uh, gaming thing, it's like really great to, you know, lend my experience to this team. Anyone else? Questions for Steve? All right, guys. Um, yes, John. Scalability, you get more all the issues you get mass adoption happening quickly. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like to scale a product like this is not easy. Um, yeah, that's, we, we know that. That's why we really want to test the uh, majority of like Australia first. Um, the biggest thing is servers, uh, especially from a content perspective as well. Um, but generally, what happens because we have a company model as well as a, the token model um, in terms of like Series A, Series B uh, funding. It's very, very easy once you're, if you're growing at that scale as a tech company, um, no problems getting the money to, to scale at a global level. Okay, and second, because you've got a corporate model behind this, is there going to be benefits to uh, getting involved where you can actually benefit from the corporate side as well and not just the blockchain side? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Everyone's uh, trying to hack into my computer right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so from the corporate side, uh, obviously we, we have the, the co-founders and the, the management structure there, but uh, we, we did leave uh, a portion of, of the company uh, shares to, to go for, from an investment point of view. Um, so the company model is, uh, is a 20% 20 of all revenue uh, goes to GFE Global. Uh, that comes through the through the platform, and then obviously 10% of that 20% goes to the GFE, uh, Foundation as well. So um, we're not really about selling shares uh, as as such, but uh, obviously as VCs and angel investors come on board, uh, shares will be issued uh, along the way. So you can benefit uh, from the platform, but ultimately it's, it's from the token as well. So the token itself is going to go on the supply demand. It's not going to go on actually the company value. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so it's just free markets. It's uh, it will be speculatively tra uh, traded. Uh, obviously, when when news breaks, and it's similar to any other token uh, that's on the platform. Uh, the only difference is, uh, you know, regardless of the price, um, things still go on from uh, from a platform perspective. So it's not uh, cryptocurrency that you need to hold like a hundred thousand. Uh, there could potentially be fifty thousand or two hundred thousand. Um, you know, you can purchase as as you need it. Uh, on the platform as well. Okay, last question, the spoiled store. Yes. 
you're going to be purchasing a lot of product and then selling it, like you're going to get a, probably a, a wholesale price and then sell it? Yeah, correct. So uh, as the platform grows and we get more and more users and that, obviously uh, more revenue through the store. Um, the store itself is, is just one big juggernaut of a business if it, if, if it takes off. Um, so we'll be looking to recruit someone within that. Um, to start with, it'll be more of a plug-in because we, we don't want to deal with postage and shipping. Um, and we do have a, a potential partner um, in the luxury goods online store that's actually quite big, but uh, obviously non-disclosures and, and we haven't shaken hands on anything just yet, so we can't make any announcements on that one. Alright, this is a big question. You mentioned the base of this before. Yes. How does this fit in? Yeah, so just, uh, just to give like a, a really quick overview, so otherwise I could talk for hours, but um, the metaverse, I mean, no one really knows exactly how it will end up being defined and, and what platforms we're going to be using. Uh, but obviously, if we're, we're plugged into a virtual metaverse, uh, a lot of this stuff is super relevant. There's uh, you know, content that can be created within the metaverse and, and sold uh, through a micropayment system. It's effectively just an overlay of, of the, the three part, the three layers that we've got. So um, you'll be able to go on metaverse dates uh, and you'll be able to use the store to purchase like NFTs um, as well for somebody or for yourself. So that's like way, way ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Anyone else? I'm not going to pretend like I understand half of what's going on. And if you understand half, you do it well. I'm very excited and I just want to say well up. Yay! Yay. Please stay for drinks, we've, we've all plenty. Um, seek out anyone with the GFP shirt. Uh, maybe not Johnny. <laughs> He's got too many questions. <laughs> uh, and as I said, we'll have the, the two sales drinks. I need to know everything, okay? <laughs> we've got three hours to ask questions. Alright, uh, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.